Welcome to week 15, our last week of our wonderful Native uh, Nations course. I'm so glad that you've been able to get through the whole 15 weeks and you've done such a great job. You've had a chance to learn about not only a whole lot of different tribes from uh, Arctic through Canada, the US, US Southern or Northern Mexico, but you've also had a chance to learn a lot more about a particular tribe that you decided to study for your mini projects. So congratulations, good job. So let me move over to shared screen and we will now take a look. We don't need to see that or that, but we will take a look at that. So here's our home screen from our class. You'll see a picture that you've seen before, of course, of Monument Valley. And uh, that's appropriate for this week because we have uh, a video we're going to see at the end of the uh, this lecture of a traditional Navajo uh, elder who is going to be talking to us about one of their sp spiritual principles. Monument Valley is, is a sacred, special kind of place. Uh, it's a national or a, a park within the Navajo Nation. It's a Navajo park. And you can go there. You can park in the parking lot and see this view. But if you want to go down on those roads, then you pay extra to have a private tour with one of the Navajo families that's been given the concession to um, give, uh, give those tours. They've been trained on how to do it safely and so on. And they will take you out on four wheel drive to uh, walk, drive around and do it in such a way that it's not going to damage um, that sac sacred place. All right, let's take a look at our uh, study guide for week 15. You'll notice that it's a very brief guide because I intentionally wanted you to have a little bit of a break the last week of class because I know in your other classes, you're either taking your final exam this week or you're taking it soon. And that's a lot of pressure. So you've already read the book. <laughs> you've taken a lot of quizzes already. And for the last uh, quiz, uh, it's just going to be about this one half hour video that you'll see about Native American uh, religions. So that will be much more manageable. And as usual, there's the yellow highlighted blue font hints, which you will also see in our PowerPoint. So here's our PowerPoint for this week. We've just taken a look at our study guide, and I've just explained that uh, you've already done a lot of work. We're very proud of you, and we're ready to move the last bit of information that you need to remember uh, for the class. So you'll notice there are three photos on this slide. Uh, in the top left, there's the Crow Canyon petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are uh, little drawings on cave walls that their artwork, sometimes they contain sacred symbols. Uh, and it's usually uh, nowadays, wherever this is located, it's a special place for whichever tribe lives near those petroglyphs. Just below, you'll see Bryce Canyon, which is a national park, another sacred place. And on the right side, uh, Devil's Tower National Monument, which I'm quite sure in indigenous language has another name. And places like this um, were and are special to native peoples. Um, European peoples a long, long time ago uh, were probably more tied to natural sites, a, a cliff or a particular river or um, some sort of a, a, another place that's maybe a little bit unique. And then eventually started building churches, uh, you know, through the late uh, 800s, 900s, up all the way till now, cathedrals. And those are the sacred places. But for Native peoples, the sacred places were places in nature. Just like all the other cultures, pretty much universal around the world, the Native peoples in North America, uh, their traditional beliefs would include some idea of a supreme being, a creator, God with a capital D. Um, in some places, it might be um, represented by uh, a being that's not like a human, but maybe even an animal, but some kind of great being 
that were created when you've heard a couple creation stories in some of our mini lectures. In 1878, 1978, there was the American Re Indian Religious Freedom Act passed by people who were hoping in Congress and that the native religions would no longer be controlled by the uh, mainstream government, state governments, local governments. They would have the freedom that comes with our constitution. But there's still this one factor, at least, that's a little bit in play, which is that the Native American church uh, uses peyote, which is a plant that grows uh, kind of half underground in northern Mexico and southern part of the southwest part of the United States. And this plant, if you use it, uh, will give you hallucinations or visions. And it is still illegal at the federal level, as well as in some of the states. So the Native American church, which this is their symbol, um, continues to have some occasional issues with the government about the use of peyote, peyote moving from one place to another, um, that kind of thing. So as mentioned earlier, nature is an important part of uh, native cultures. And this is a picture of a Cheyenne walking uh, where they live. And one of their principles, spiritual principle and material is that you walk gently as you go through life. In other words, that you sustain the environment, you respect the environment. And a couple of different times this semester, you've heard the idea of walk with beauty or live with beauty, which has to do with balance and um, being harmonious with the surrounding environment. So that's all for new information for now. Um, we're going to, I hope that you will have a wonderful vacation. I do appreciate everything that you've done this semester. I know it's a lot of work, uh, and I hope that um, you were able to have some experiences and learn about some things that uh, will make you want to go out and get to know more about uh, Native cultures. Uh, visit when you see there's powwow, which we do have normally every year at SRJC. When you see that kind of thing, go to it. Uh, talk to people. Find out, you know, what are they thinking? What are their experiences like? Continue to be a learner. Uh, there's really no age limit. <laughs> so let's go. I'm continuing to learn new things, and I hope that you will too. All right. So speaking of learning new things from an, an elder, <laughs> this fellow we've seen one time before when he was telling us a story. I think it was a coyote story. And he's going to talk about taking a spiritual principle and putting it into practice. And this principle is that you can become a better person through enduring suffering. And this is also a, a message that many, many other cultures and most major world religions, including uh, Buddhism, Buddhism uh, also teaches. There have been many times in the history of the net where they had to endure and uh, persevere through uh, suffering. And the causes of that that may have brought the uh, the suffering is a great lesson. And in many ways, people would think it was uh, a negative thing. But it is a positive thing if we can take the opportunity to learn from it and consider the idea of suffering as a gift. It is a gift from the holy people. And it is our responsibility as individuals, the net, that we learn from these things. What caused it and what did the people do back then and what it is that we need to do today. After the uh, Treaty of 1868 was signed, our people came back to this very small portion of the land that was originally a large portion of land in the uh, Southwest. But our people had to move back into areas where they were not familiar with the, the landscape or with the sources of water and feed for their animals and so on. And then when they had to reduce their livestock under force, where the government brought in people and they shot their herd to sheep by the hundreds and just left the bodies to rot. That was a great mistake and it was a suffering. 
and our people never forgot that suffering. But it is today that we have the idea that uh, overgrazing was a real problem. There was a lot of erosion in that. And the uh, lesson learned is that we are a little bit more cautious about how we raise our livestock and how we take care of them. And that's only one thing. The idea is that we have individual suffering, whether it be emotional, mental, physical, or spiritual. These are things that we are gifted with to be able to deal with those issues in our lives that we must endure and persevere. Ha'inna is what they used to say, and they still say it. That means endure it and uh, hang in there. When our people were subjected to uh, the long walk or actually being taken captive, they endured a lot of things on their way over there, some 300 plus miles across the state of New Mexico and the uh, imprisonment for four years where they had inadequate food and there was the land was alkaline, they couldn't grow anything, the water was bad. And uh, so they endured and persevered in their uh, condition of imprisonment. And what we learn from that particular experience is that we have to be more united as the net. Prior to that, all the different clan families and, and clan relatives pretty much took care of their own clan families and their own clan selves. But then when they returned from the long walk, it was that we had to understand that we had to be united, all of the clan. So we took everything and put it under eh, kinship, relationships that we have as the net. And that was a thing that was uh, developed from that. And so to this day, kinship, relationships, and that is very important. But we can take it a bit further and say that the relationship that we have with the supreme beings and the holy people is very much important. It is very, very important. It's the most important thing in our traditional teaching is to have that relationship with the deity. And it is uh, the things that are contained in the ceremonies, the songs, the prayers, and the way that ceremonies are conducted. And so it is to help us to understand that, that the positive things that come from the way that we are subjected to suffering and how we endure it and what we learn from it. And it makes us a better people, more spiritual in many ways. In the uh, teaching, just being angry about the things that you suffer and the things that you are subjected to and making yourself a victim. You make yourself a victim. And it is that uh, Chechnya or anger is something that is dangerous to you as an individual. Anger will do more harm than good. And so you can't be angry about the past and try to compare it to what we have now and divide the two and make them opposite because it affects our lives in negative ways because it destroys the future that we can have. So we have to learn from the past and understand what the conditions are, what they really are at the present time, so that we can plan for the future and the things that are ahead. Because the planning in the future is not really for us in many ways, it's for our children, our grandchildren, and all of the people that will come after us. And those are the things that are probably on the, the good side of knowing. Don't make it so that you are angry about the past and not do anything about it because the things that you want for today are not what you would like to have, but it is that for learning from the past and then seeing what we have now and making a plan for a better future. Those are the things that we can learn from being subject to suffering. Don't be a queer. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the things you need to do. And the little things that you do, little things matter. They add up, just like the uh, seconds of a clock. They add up to minutes and hours and days and years. So the little things that we consider as a suffering condition of our lives is really a learning experience. It is something that makes us grow to be better people if we do the enduring and the persevering in the right way. And so those are the things that we are told. Well, it's just wonderful. And would you believe, uh, yes, spiritual wisdom from a Marine? Because on his 
chest, he was wearing a, uh, I'll just show you here. Um, he's wearing a medallion that shows him, uh, <laughs> I guess maybe we won't see it. Um, it shows a medallion that says U.S. Marine Corps. And a lot of Native Americans are very uh, patriotic and have served, including one of our psychology professors, uh, Dr. Flies with Hawks, uh, as a former uh, Air Force um, officer, I believe. So she served in the Air Force and was uh, uh, made her contribution. And you've made a good contribution too to each other in the groups and also by sharing your many projects. And I hope that you will continue to want to learn more about Native American peoples, that you'll go to powwows, which we do have one uh, at SRJC each year where different tribes come together and it's something that's open to the public where you're encouraged to come and ask questions and make new friends and continue to learn uh, more about the native uh, peoples uh, for the rest of your life. And if you get the chance to go to some of the reservations, to go in a respectful way and learn and keep your eyes and ears open and you'll, um, you'll benefit. And I hope you'll share information about this class with others if you liked it and feel like they can benefit from it. Uh, it was designed to make you succeed. So that's why we have the study guides and the same information that's mentioned in the study guides and is in the text and the videos and also in the quizzes to give you a, a good opportunity to do well. And you've done all the work. Thank you so much. I hope that when you uh, finish the semester that you'll have a really nice vacation or break for uh, a little bit of time before you come back 